So having seen that little clip, now we are going to discuss how is genetic engineering actually done. Okay, so you remember I introduced this word to you called vectors, or vector, singular. Right? So what are vectors? Right? They are used to carry the genes to the intended cells. Okay, and vectors can come in various forms. Remember it was a virus in that clip that we showed earlier. So a vector can be, virus can be a vector. But the other vectors can also include something called plasmids. Okay, and what are plasmids? So plasmids are like these guys over here. Okay? They are found in bacteria. They are not part of the bacterial DNA, but they are also DNA. They're also made of DNA, but they don't form the main parts of the bacterial DNA. Okay? They are formed of nucleotides as well. And what is the purpose then of this? So plasmids usually have a very specific purpose. They are only used under circumstances. For instance, they carry genes such as antibiotic resistance. Okay? So if they carry genes such as that, it is only useful when the antibiotic is present. Okay, if the antibiotic is not present, then of course the, this is just ca being carried around. Okay? So this is how we can use plasmids. So scientists use plasmids because they can carry a certain gene that you like and then use it as a vector to put into another cell. Okay? So the most important point from all of this is that the transferred gene must be able to express itself in the recipient organism. So think about it. We can do all these exciting signs, right? You know, like put genes here, put genes there, transfer here and everything, right? But if the transferred gene does not express itself, then it is pointless, right? Like, for instance, in the example that we talked about earlier in our clip, right, we have a, a wrong gene, right? The gene is, either muta is genes mutated, either you do not have any functional protein or you have a protein that is a bit weird, doesn't function properly. And what is being done? After this whole process of genetic engineering, we're introducing a functional good copy of the gene. Okay? Then that produces the functional protein so that well, it solves the problem. Okay, so there is another way of looking at it. Right? You can also introduce, using vectors, a gene that will then cut out. Okay, the gene will produce a protein that then cuts out the problematic part of the DNA. Okay, that's a little bit more involved, right? So people don't use it, use it as often as just replacing with a functional copy of the gene that produces a functional protein. Okay, so this is how genetic engineering is done.